Hello everybody, uh, welcome to Photoshop Magic. Uh, my name is Sopal and today we are going to be talking about how to turn an image to have a, a water reflection effect in Photoshop. This looks amazing as you can see on your screen right now. We just have a regular photograph of uh, a mountain and you know the land right here right below it and as you can tell it's just a land with a mountain and uh, there's really no water there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, try to have a reflection of uh, a water as it seems like it's the water effect okay so um, all right so let's get started in here so if you haven't uh, subscribed already please do so this channel focuses on the magical and uh, creative power of Photoshop and it's designed for anyone that, who has no prior knowledge to, to get him or her excited or aspire to master Photoshop at a basic and intermediate level uh, show me that you love my uh, work by subscribing, like, and share my content. And uh, as always, if this video is too detailed, you can always just speed it up uh, to two times the speed, and I'll turn your bad day to an amazing day. So laugh up, make fun of me, and all is well. Okay? So as always, uh, always give credit to the owner of the photographs used, like below, um, that we have here. Um, give me a moment. There you have it. It's right there. Okay, perfect. So yeah, so um, I use my photographs from a website called pixels.com. It's totally free to use. And all I did was I created, a, I did a search of uh, mountain mountain sites, and I came up with this one, and I really liked it. So there's many different options that you guys can choose from. I highly recommend if you're gonna follow along with this tutorial, just try a different photograph. And you know, try to mess around with the settings and everything, and um, make it your own unique style. Okay. Um, so yeah, so this this is the license for Pixels. Totally free to use. All the photos and videos um, attribution is not even required. But you know, always oh, it's always a good habit to give credit to the photographer. Okay. Perfect. So let's get started. So the first thing I did was I uh, I downloaded the image from here. Uh, I went to the down arrow. I click on download so you can you know customize any way you want so you click on it click download it's gonna get downloaded down here if you left click on the up arrow go to show in folder and then there's gonna be many different um, photographs that you have downloaded okay so obviously uh, know where you save your your work so you can actually find that particular photo okay so without further ado um, let's get started okay so we're gonna open up Photoshop and we're going to go to a file and we're going to open and we are going to go find that particular photograph that we uh, took from there yes in here content uh, perfect alright so it's been open okay so if it's too zoom in or out what you can do uh, you can just uh, hold the control button down which is the bottom left of your keyboard hold it down and and tap the minus sign or the plus sign to either go zoom in or zoom out just like so so right now I am holding the control button down. I'm tapping the plus sign one time another one time another one time that's to zoom in so we're just gonna zoom out I'm, I'm still holding the control button down tapping the minus sign minus sign minus sign until it zoom out to the perfect proportion for for me to uh, be able to work from okay so perfect so now that we get that out of the way um, the very first thing we want to do is we want to click on the Marquise tool to be able to select the area where we would like to, to get the reflection. Okay, so the Marquise tool is right here. So you want to left click on it or right click uh, to bring up these four options. And the one that we want is called a rectangular Marquise tool. Okay, so we're going to left click on it to select it. As you can see, if you come above the image, you will see like a, a plus sign right here. And you can be off a little, the border a little bit here. It's best if you, you are because you want to be able to select everything down here to make sure to get the right reflection. Okay, so I'm going to be a little bit off the border. I'm going to left click on the mouse, a hold, and I'm going to drag all the way down to the areas where I would like to get reflected. And uh, through my experience, I, I think this area would be a good point to get reflected because this area right here um, I want this area to be reflected and, and it almost seems like there's kind of like water here you will see it in a little bit 
but that is a good point because we want to have some trees over here too to make it a little bit more realistic okay so all right the next thing that we want to do is we want to create a second layer um, so you have to make sure that you still have the marching ant um, selected like so uh, I, I have two screens you can't see my other screen right now so but the thing is uh, just make sure that the uh, marching ant is still selected once you've done so and as always uh, if you have not you know watched my other videos um, in Photoshop it's a very complex program so you do not want to just click away at, at anything and if you have a certain item selected or not selected and you go on to the next uh, step sometimes uh, it might not work as expected because a certain item before might have gotten deselected okay so so now we have to make sure that this part is still selected still have the marching ant before we go on to the next step okay so the next step would be to make sure that this part is highlighted too so we're going to left click in the background and we're going to do a shortcut on the keyboard hold the control button down bottom left CTRL and we're going to tap J once and if done right you will see at the bottom right hand corner right here it will say layer one okay okay and to continue on to the next step we have to make sure that layer one is selected as so and we want to go to the image of the middle right here and do a control T control T all that does is it will bring up we're gonna hold the control button down again and we're gonna tap T once and as you can see um, it allows us to resize the image it has this rectangular box around here so uh, if you have that then good you did it right and the next thing that we want to do is we want to go anywhere in the middle of this rectangular shape right here and we want to right click on it to give us more options and sometimes you have to click twice if you you know accidentally click on something else it will give you many different options here the option that we want to create this mirror water effect is we want to click on flip vertical so it's going to flip this vertically um, so as you can see this is a second image that we have on top of the background so when we drag it down it's like a mirror effect of the first one so so now that it's been flipped we're just going to left click hold and drag and I want to drag it down to the point where um, this line right here this trees it meets the other tree creating uh, a water effect Okay, if I go down a little bit too down, I'm going to see all these, uh, you know, lands and it wouldn't look as nice. So we want to we wanna get it to that point right there. Just make it as good as possible. Sometimes a little bit overlapping is good too. Perfect. And once we like it, uh, we have to make sure to, to click on the check mark right there or push the enter button on your keyboard to uh, have that effect take place, okay? If you don't, then we cannot continue with the next step because it will... Uh, confuse the program okay so we're gonna click OK right here and it's gonna um, as you can see there's yes yeah, taking effect okay perfect so for the next one we want to uh, hold the control button down and we want to make sure that this part is selected first the layer one and we want to go to the black circle with a, a white rectangle on it, like right here. Uh, we're going to click on it. It's going to create a clipping mask. Okay, so add uh, a layer mask, basically. So if done right, you should be able to see two images now on there. Um, we have the first one. We also have the second one. So the first thing we want to do is we want to break that chain. We don't want the two to be connected anymore. So to do that, you want to uh, sometimes you have to click on it uh, twice in order to get it taken off. One to select it and the other one to take the chain off. And um, as you can see, the chain is taken off. The next step that we want to do is we want to be able to select only the first one here. And the best way to only select the first mask is to click on the background first to, to select the, the background. Um, sometimes you have to click on it twice because like one and another one time not simultaneously because sometimes it, it, it gets a little bit uh, deselected it doesn't know which area that we want to be selected in order to uh, make some modification 
So now that we know that the bottom part is selected, we're going to click on the very first uh, layer mask. And as you can tell, it's, only, it's, it's the only one that's, that's a highlight right now. And that's what we want. And we have to make sure that only the first one is highlighted before continuing on. OK? So the next thing that we want to do is we, we want to uh, blur it. Um, so we are going to, now that it's highlighted, we're going to go to Filter. We're going to go Blur. And we want to uh, do a motion blur. And the beauty part of Photoshop is that depending on what pictures you have, um, when we do any kind of modification, it allows you to see in real time. So as you can see right here, um, because I've worked on this image you know, a few times now, um, I know what number uh, is best for it. And I find that 90 would be best for this one. So for your particular image, just you know, play around with it until you like it. And, and there's a, a toggle right here that you can left click, hold and drag to, um, and you can see in real time what it does. So if we're all the way to the very beginning, it's almost like it's too clear. It looks too clear to be water. Uh, I mean, it looks really amazing, but it's not the best option that we want. So if we want, if we're on the other end, it's a little, it's too opaque and we're back to the land. Okay, we want to be somewhere in between and the best number would be around here somewhere where it looks a little bit kind of uh, like water, like a water reflection. So because it's it's a blur, it's a kind of blur from the mountain. Okay, so we have that and we're gonna click on okay. And once that is done, once we have the blur, we want to do another filter. We wanna click on filter, we're gonna go to blur and this time we want the Gaussian blur. Gaussian blur again. It's it's the same, it's quite similar. Um, so we can just mess around with the uh, the radius a little bit. So if we we're all the way to the left. It it looks a little bit too straight. All the way to the right. It's um that doesn't look right. So you just want to always be in between. And the best number in my opinion would be around like four or five or six maybe. Like six seven is a bit much. So you can see it's a little bit too blur to blurish it, it doesn't look as realistic so we want it to be around four or five like four we'll click, click, click OK perfect and as always it's a best practice to uh, save your work as you go along I think we have reached a point where um, if we don't save our work if something were to go wrong uh, such as the battery go dies out or uh, the program freezes which does happen from time to time and if we have spent like hours on this project already and we haven't saved our work and it's lost and it's it cannot be recovered okay so uh, saving it does not take long so we're just gonna go to save we're gonna go to file real quick we're gonna click on save the shortcut for it is control s on your keyboard okay so we're gonna click on it I'm gonna save to this computer we're gonna give her a name we're gonna put reflection creating reflection uh, final perfect and all as always you want to save it the first save always as a Photoshop because even if this is our final work we want to be able to make changes into the future uh, we never know if we want to make any changes to it as it will keep all the layers all the different aspects all the changes within uh, Photoshop so you can actually make modifications later if it's not saved under this format, um, you cannot make any modification to it. You cannot see what was changed or what had been changed. Okay, so always best to do that for now. And then as a final thing, um, after we have saved this, we can you know save it as a JPEG or other uh, formats that can be easily read by other devices such as your smartphone. Uh, JPEG is some, one of the most popular ones. Okay, so now that we have saved it, we can continue on. So now we want to make the water reflection a little bit darker to make it a little bit more realistic. And to do this, we have to go to the button that looks like a half moon. So uh, again, we have to make sure that only the first mass is selected. We want to go to this half moon right here. And we have many different options in here. The one that we want is called level. And this one, we have to mess around with it a little bit too. But the fir very first thing that we want to do is we want to create another masking in here. We want to this adjustment affects all layers below. 
So basically it's going to affect all that layers below. That's what it does. So we're going to left click on it. And as you can see, it has this drop down arrow right here indicating that if you've done it right. Okay, so perfect. So now we're just going to move all, toggle all of these around. Um, as you can see, it, it changes in real time. If I'm all the way to the left, it looks so unrealistic. It looks a bit washed out. So you just want to, you know, play around with it a little bit, move all of these around to make it as realistic as possible or, or however you like it to look. I find that that is a little bit too dark. I'm going to lighten it up a bit to make it look as if it was daytime. Perfect. I, I think that looks really nice. Perfect. So, um, all right. Yeah, and we have it, and that's literally it uh, to create, you know, a reflection of um, basically just a mounting uh, a mountain or or any reflection that we want to make it have that watercolor effect and now that we this is our final product and we want to be able to save it you have to we can do the keyboard shortcut of holding the control down and tap the S button uh, and then there you go it's been saved and as always uh, thank you for your support um, if you really like the video please smash that like button and uh, if you haven't already uh, subscribe to the channel for more content as I post my videos daily and I know uh, we don't, I don't have much videos right now but um, over the course of a year I'm hoping to get at least 365 videos if I'm doing one a day and if I have a bit more time I'll probably create two to three videos a day um, so always thank you and I hope you have an amazing day okay